Has Persona 3 Reload exposed a massive issue with Atlas and how they operate their games and their business and what they do? Well, it seems like a lot of the Persona and RPG community are absolutely thinking that way based off of the latest rounds of information that we got when it comes to Persona 3 Reload, Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance, and other titles that Atlas has been bringing out recently. Now, just to let you guys know, listen. I understand completely what we're going to get into is absolutely going to be subjective and it's going to be stuff that people agree with, people disagree with, but I want to get the overall pulse of what my community thinks and of course the greater extended YouTube community when it comes to what's happening here with Persona 3 Reload and many of Atlas's other games that are quite controversial in terms of how they handle DLC and how they handle game re-releases. But before we get into any of that, what's good everyone, OJ here, welcome back to another video. Please make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe Subscribe if you are someone new and click that notification bell to get my Nintendo Switch and RPG videos first and also check out the link in the description below as we're giving away 10 copies of Princess Peach Showtime digital copies in addition to a Nintendo Switch OLED. Hit that subscribe button to enter in and check out the link in the description below for more details. Now let's go ahead and jump right into this because I find this to be fascinating. Some of the biggest voices over on Twitter and YouTube that are in the SMT and JRPG community are voicing their concerns with what's happening here and i've had a number of conversations with other content creators and people who feel very similar to this or feel like there is an issue now this is from faz over there on twitter scramble faz he says this and he's a big smt guy big smt persona jrpg creator and he says that persona 3 reload is a 70 dollars game it has $30 launch DLC, and now it has a $35 expansion pass. If you bought the $100 Digital Deluxe Edition or $200 Aegis Edition, the expansion pass is not included. Thoughts on this? And it's just a picture right there. You guys can kind of see it. I'm not going to describe it, but there's the tweet. There's the picture. And this is a very interesting thing when it comes down to it. It's like you would think that if you're going to buy a $200 edition of the game, or if you're going to buy a $100 digital edition of the game, that it would come with the expansion pass, that it would come with the launch DLC. It would come with some of the stuff that you're expecting. But if you wanted the full, complete experience in terms of collector's edition and everything, you're looking at quite a big bit here overall with persona 3 reload which is a playstation 2 game yes it was ported over yes there's the portable yes there's different things but it doesn't even have all of the content from the previous versions of the game in the standard base game and what you're paying for with the dlc is stuff that was there beforehand and not included in the game now atlas has came out and stated that hey look it wasn't cut content this is what we were doing it would have costed way more to include it in the base package but remember it's a 70 dollar game overall and it doesn't include a lot of the content from the previous versions of the game now it does a lot of new things in the game that make it more modern and make it more fun and better to play but there are some still missing things and that's why this post on twitter got over 10 thousand likes and over 1.2 million impressions a lot of people saw this and over 1.4 thousand comments so yeah people were definitely talking i feel like there's some issues with how atlas is doing their business with persona and with their rpgs now next up is from maku tropical maku on twitter and he said this so you're telling me atlas charged some folks more and none of the additions include the expansion pass not even the premium one this is them fully knowingly planning before game came out to release an expansion pass with quote extended story content atlas kind of low for this one so absolutely he's kind of doubling up on what faz had to say here talking about the different editions the premium and digital editions as you guys can see here you have the 107 dollar one you have the 122 dollar one 152 dollar one and then the expansion pass 52.95 add-on packs and all of this stuff here so this is very interesting because as someone who loves atlas games i play atlas games all the time you absolutely have to look at some of these things here and say okay what is going on but this is something that atlas has been doing for quite some time right if you go back if you look at like the ps2 era for example look at persona 3 and then you had persona 3 fes then you had persona 3 portable right you have three separate versions of that same game split across multiple systems and then you had persona 3 portable which was re-released 
to all the different platforms and everything, which some people don't like that in terms of what they've done. Some people like it a little bit more compared to the previous Persona FES. So there's some issues across the board with every single version for the most part, with the exception of, I think, Persona 3 FES, which most people say, okay, that's awesome. You know, pretty much did everything, put the answer, everything was good. But yeah, Persona 3 Portable, some issues, but overall, I guess the most content when it comes to Persona 3 in terms of what it offers. And the same thing happens with Persona 4. You look at Persona 4, then Persona 4 Golden, stuck on the ps vita for a decade after persona 4 originally on the playstation 2 and they bring it back with persona 4 but that didn't get as many in terms of re-releases with the content just persona 4 persona 4 golden but then you look at persona 5 right persona 5 persona 5 royal on the ps4 then persona 5 royal re-release on the ps5 and then it doesn't transfer over with the saves you got to replay it if you want the extra royal content and then the other versions of the game no cross save and all that so there are definitely issues across the board now when it comes to shin megami tensei same thing that some people had some people had a problem that the new Shin Megami Tensei Vengeance game that's essentially a new game jammed into the previous game and then a ton of updates and additions and everything people were upset that Shin Megami Tensei Vengeance is not a separate thing like you can't just play the separate 80 hour campaign with the updates and all of that there it's not like a dlc it's something to where about halfway through the campaign from the original game you can play this new path now you can play the original game in its form when it released back in 2021 if you want that but most of us i think most people are going to want to play the new path because what it does is that it makes a ton of improvements and adjustments it adds in some player characters you have a new female protagonist in there you also have some of the protagonists from the previous game that are going to be in your party using their demons as well so it makes a better well-rounded experience and pretty much fixes many of the issues that people had with Shin Megami Tensei 5 now I love the game but people had many issues with the frame rate and the resolution when it comes to the switch okay well now it's on all the different platforms we'll see what they do with the switch version of the game did they tune that up a little bit did they fix some of those frame rate issues in the open-ended areas we'll see on the switch version but if you have a problem with that you can play it on pc you can play it on xbox you can play it on playstation now so that's definitely a good thing overall and then they also fixed the story situation that people had like the story was very hands-off and honestly if you really wanted to get all of the story in smt5 you had to pretty much do everything you had to almost 100 percent the game to get like the secret endings and to get certain parts certain main parts with story with some of the characters you have to do a bunch of side quests heck there's some things that aren't even accessible so you get like 75 percent of the demon compendium which takes a ton of time and a lot of people didn't even see that story content so now they're kind of shaping it to where a lot of the story is going to be intertwined and baked into the experience from the very beginning to where you're going to get that experience with other human characters that you're going to be able to use in your party and add more dialogue choices and different things to do plus it comes with a lot of the dlc and all the stuff that people talked about beforehand but people are upset because you have to rebuy the game there is no expansion add-on to where you can just download it now this one's a little bit different for me at least because i feel that like the persona stuff probably is a bit more egregious with persona 3 reload considering with smt5 vengeance that's a game that's like 80 hours, right? It's like an 80 hour campaign that they're adding in and a ton of improvements and adjustments. I get, you know, about halfway, you're gonna have to play it again, I get that. But I think that because even with the halfway thing, there's things that happen with the main characters and scenarios from the very beginning with that new character, the new lady, and with other characters that are on your team that are actually doing things that they didn't do in the original at the beginning. I think it makes a little bit more sense if they're trying to set up those characters and tell it and kind of really branch off once you get to that certain point so to me it makes a bit more sense with smt5 vengeance and what they're doing than with persona 3 reload and what's happening there but like i said before man atlas has been doing this for quite some time we've seen where they release a game have dlc whatever the case is and i find it interesting it's really up to what you value in your games when it comes to rpgs do you value what atlas is doing with the base game and the content that you get is it worth that price for you and at the end of the day that's what you have to answer for yourself is it worth it for you and what you want to play now you can still be upset with some of the practices heck there's some things that i don't like as well when it comes to how atlas does things with these different dlc editions especially with the digital deluxe editions and all that i do feel that if you spend you know 150 dollars or something 
something like that. It should probably come with the expansion pass. It should come with those type of things, considering that it is already a $70 game, right? And that's PS4 and Xbox One. So it's not like it's like a PS5 and Xbox Series game only. It's also on the last generation systems as well. So if you're going to do all that, I do feel that, yeah, you probably should have all of that stuff included in. So I absolutely feel that Atlas is definitely making a few mistakes here with that, especially with what Faz had to say here, man. I think that he's being honest and open about it. And I'm being honest and open about it too. As someone who loves Atlas games and Persona games, definitely they need to relook at some of this stuff. I think that people would actually buy the game sooner, in my opinion, if they included some of this stuff in the game and actually had it in some of the special editions and all that. Some people do wait for deals and discounts because they know Atlas is going to do some of these things, right? They're going to do the DLCs or the extra editions or stuff like that. So they don't even buy the game at launch. They wait, they get it at a cheaper discount and then get whatever expansion or they wait for the next version to come out. So I think it's actually in Atlas's better interest in business and everything to actually include some of these things in there. And that might increase the week one, week two, week three sales. Because after that, people just start waiting when it comes to Atlas games because they kind of know people are caught on to these different things that Atlas will do with their titles or re-releases of a better version, like a Persona 5 Royal, for example. So I think that Atlas just needs to readjust a bit in terms of what they're doing. But yeah, when it comes to SMT, I'm cool with that overall. But Atlas still has more games that are going to be coming, man. We've got more titles that are coming out. SMT 5 Vengeance, that's going to be coming out very soon here. We got Metaphor Refantazio as well, which is one of my most anticipated, actually, my most anticipated game for 2024. So are we going to go through the same issue with Metaphor Refantazio, with the DLCs and with what's happening here and with the expansion passes and with all the other things that are happening? Now, you also have to remember that Atlas also got a bag for Persona 3 Reload from Microsoft. So they provided that on Game Pass. So it's not like they were hurting for revenue when it comes to Persona and this remake overall. But Metaphor Refantazio is going to be very interesting. Are they going to take some of this feedback that people are talking about, some of their biggest fans, and implement that? That to make sure that that game doesn't go through the same issue because it's not a established IP, it's brand new. So I personally feel for that game, Atlas should absolutely make everything included in the base. And if they want to do DLC down the line, that's fine. But if they have all these different plans, all these different digital editions and different things with different DLCs attached to them, and if you buy the highest one, it still doesn't come with it and all this other stuff, I think that can hinder people trying out something new. So I'm hoping that Atlas understands and realizes that, hey, this is a new IP. This is something different. Include everything in that base game, which they do a great job in terms of content in their games. You always get a lot of content, but some people might feel like they're missing out on the experience if you don't include some of that stuff in there. So I'm hoping that Atlas really pays attention to what's going on here, what people are saying, how things are, and decides to adjust for Metaphor Refantazio because there's absolutely people that are their biggest fans that buy their games that necessarily don't like how far it's went. Not that you can't do DLC or anything like that, but it's just going a little bit too far with some of the stuff, especially with Persona 3 Reload. SMT5 Vengeance, that's not as bad, but Persona 3 Reload absolutely seems like it's a little bit of a reach with some of the stuff here. But once again, this is all up to what you guys think, your own personal thoughts on value and what's happening. So let me know in the comment section below, is Atlas going a little bit too far? Is it a little bit too much when it comes to some of the DLCs and everything that's going on with the pricing and all of that? What do you think is going to happen with SMT5 Vengeance? Are you more okay with that? And what about Metaphor Refantazio? Is this stuff going to happen? Or are they going to learn from some of these things here and adjust accordingly so they can make sure that this new IP has no controversy standards? eggs or hitches beforehand so what do you guys think let me know in the comment section below all right guys that wraps it up for this video here thank you so much for watching i do appreciate it please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you are someone new click that notification bell and check out my other nintendo switch and rpg videos right here on screen thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys for the next video peace